Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Um, in this video, I want to show you one of the trials of different eucalypt species I'm doing. Um, but before I get started, the preface of this was that I've now moved back to the East Coast from California, but um, I miss the eucalypts there so, so much. So I've decided to bring a piece of California, or I guess precisely a piece of eucalypts um, back to my windowsill in my apartment and so here they are um, I've I've been growing about um, 25 or something species and just to see how 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 well each of them grow and how fast each of them grow um, of course you know this is just one environment it doesn't say that you know a species grows faster here will definitely grow faster putting it in another climate or environment. But yeah, it's a sunny window cell. It's southeast facing, so it does get a few hours of um, quote unquote direct sun. Uh, I'm putting the quotation marks just because it's filtered through window glasses. Um, but yeah, and hopefully I will make a few more videos as time goes on. Right now it's August. 19th 20th something like that 2020 um so hopefully you know a few months in i can give you an update and put them together in the same video so it's more of a continuum of how much they've grown over the over a few months um yeah but let me just dive right in and also i wanted to show you the cotyledons of the species because usually the cotyledons are pretty diagnostic of the species identification okay so this one is Eucalyptus calyx. Um It has germinated. It's about three, all of them about three weeks old, old or so, or so. Some of them germinated a little bit slower, but I sowed the seeds like late July. Um, yeah. So Calyx has this bilobed cotyledon, and this is a um, Corymbia citriodora, the the lemon scented gum. Um, where are its cotyledons? Oh, there they are. They have this reniformed cotyledon, um, pretty common, you know, in among Corymbia species. And this one is I sold way too much here, but those are Corymbia fisifolia, ficifolia. Well, it means the leaf is ficus-like, so I guess ficifolia. Um, this is the red flowering gum. I sold too much because. Um, I thought that the seeds weren't super mature and they won't all germinate, but now I have way too many in this tiny little pot. And the cotyledon here is also pretty similar to um, Corymbia citriodora. Uh, it's this uh, reniformed shape. All right. Um, and also, I guess here is um, Corymbia clado, no, calophylla. Um, this is really closely related to the the Fichifolia over there um, and this just germinated about a few days ago so it doesn't really have any foliage yet but the, the cotyledons are pretty large and again this kidney shaped um, cotyledons all right and also I tried to arrange them kind of in the phylogenetic order uh, well the calyx is is well I sh well if I was truly following a phylogenetic order, the Clitocalyx will show up later, but it's just in that corner because the corner is sunny and warm and the Clitocalyx like is sunny and warm. Um, yeah. Well, so I guess in that sense, this isn't really a true trial. I also tried to do like three replicates for each of them, but that just takes up too much space and to get the, you know, the statistical, uh, statistical significance. So I just like, well, I'm just going to measure the highest, the tallest tree of each pot every day or every few days and see how they're growing growing. All right, back to the topic. Um, this is Eucalyptus gamophila. Um, this is a species that's more native to the drier, deserty areas. It's a trumali. Um, it's in the Eudesmia group um, together with Eucalyptus ibrothrocoris. Um, that's probably the most famous one and some of the other ornamental ones like Pleurocarpa. Um, yeah, and I think those are the most famous ones. Um, yeah, the cotyledon here is also this kidney-shaped rain form cotyledons, and you can see there as well. Um, yeah, 
This is a Maui species, but in my experience, um, it actually grows pretty fast. All right, moving on, this is Eucalyptus confocifala tort. Um, this is a species that's native to the southwest corner of Australia, native to, I think, higher rainfall areas. Um, so, and it's phylogenetically, it does, it's not like super closely related with any other species. I mean, unlike Cleocalyx, it's not either. Um, yeah, and the cotyledon here is by the lobe. And there's a few other more over there, like this, you can see this by lobe too. I think, personally, I feel like this cotyledon is narrower than some of the other bilobed cotyledons in the Mandaria group, Mandaria group, sorry, um, like global globulus. Uh, I'll show you in a little bit. All right, and now we're in the in the group where you know they have instead of bilobed or reniform cotyledons, the cotyledons are Y-shaped, um, and some of them have glands in their pith glands in the branchlets, some of them don't, and these are the ones that do have pith oil glands. I actually don't have a huge collection of the, the seeds without the oil gland that group, so unfortunately I won't have anything to show you there, but yeah, this is a, you know, you see the cotyledon Y-shaped platypus. Um, this one is a macrandra. Again, Y-shaped cotyledon, as you can see over there. Um, these are, I think, at least this one. I don't know about this one for sure. Uh, when I sowed them, the seeds kind of got mixed together. Um, but this one is a erythronema. At least, um, I'm like 80% sure it is. <laughs> Again, the cotyledon is Y-shaped. Um, this is a really beautiful Maui species. Um, it has seasonally white slash red trunk and it's really ornamental and it's a true Maui and it, um, it can grow back from the tubers of course and yeah Macrandra is also true Maui it's known well it's kind of I always think pictures of them forming gigantic tubers after like 10 years or so um, the common name for that one is river yet um, yeah so this Eberthronema and this one um, is a spatulata the swamp mallet um, again, where is it? Y-shaped cotyledons. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, that's some nidens. The seeds are quite old, so I don't know if they'll for sure germinate. And did I miss anything over here? Oh yeah. Um, and this is a ras. This one is a racemosa, the scribbly gum. Um, this is Priasiana, the, um, the, the bell-fruited Maui, I think. Um, but yeah, it's Priasiana, Priasiana the, the, the Priasiana subspecies, not the Lobata subspecies, but both of them are in the Monocalyptus group. And as you can see of their cotyledons, they're not bilobed, they're more running form and um, like kind of round. Um, and also, like this reniform is also kind of different from Corymbia's reniform, although I guess on paper they're both reniform. Um, so that's something you can only see like with a picture, I guess. All right, so that's this chunk of them. And moving on to this section here, um, and a lot of them are actually, at least like in the, in the top row, they're in the mid and area group. Um, there are just a lot of more species available here in the U.S. Um, this is bilobed cotyledons. This species I'm growing for identification. I think it's either a Dalrymplyana or a um, when I when I saw the tree, but I couldn't be so sure because it was grown in southern Cal sorry um, the the Santa Clara Valley and it doesn't have the highest rainfall. Um, so the trees aren't the most um, well formed. Um, yeah, but it's a three-bodied species. I'm growing it because one of the diagnostic features is the shape of the, the the juvenile leaves or like the seeding leaves. If it's Viminalis, it's gonna be more like a, like a lancelot um, shape. If it's Dalrymplyana, it's gonna be rounder. And if it's Rubida, it's gonna be um, rounder, but also with um, wax crystals. But yeah. 
So we'll see what this one actually turns out to be. Um, usually for the first two, three pairs of true leaves, I think it's pretty hard to tell because uh, they do transition. And this one, um, this one on the left is a Ketoniana, again, bilobed um, cotyledon. Um, this one in the corner, I don't know if you can see it with the light, is actually like a um, rogue seedling from one of my monocalyptus species. I think it's probably a racemosa, but um, I'll have to grow it out to be exactly sure. Because I also have radiata um, that didn't quite germinate. I also didn't sow that many seeds of that. Um, in my experience, I've always don't have the best um, experience germinating monocalyptus seeds. Um, they don't germinate as easily as um, some of the Cynthia murders seeds, but that just maybe my experience or my seed source. All right, this one is Menifera. And again, where are the cartilidins? Um Yeah, it's lighting. Let me see if I can, I can make it under this, show it under the sun. Yep, there it is. Cool. Menifera, brittle gum. This one is Brugisiana, I think. Yeah. Um, and the cotyledons. Do you see it? Uh, my phone screen suddenly got very dark, so I can't quite see. Um, it's probably a time to get a new phone. This the phone has been like years old. But yeah, you see the cotyledons over there. This is Brigisiana. This is, of course, um, a globulus. Very typical bilobe cotyledons. And these are Viminales. Um, I know those are Viminales because I've, I bought those seeds and um, I've grown those seeds before and they turn out to be Viminales. And those are the cotyledons of Viminales. And these are Camujolensis. And um, yeah, Camujolensis with, you know, the, the run-informed cotyledons. And this one, I'm also growing to see what species it is. Um, I think it's a river rip gum, but it also could be a Rudis. Um, because the seeds were black instead of this pale yellow as typical Camujolensis and the bark was rough, um, so I'm trying to grow it out. And the cotyledons are pretty much the same shape as, as, um, as um, Camajolensis, where it is, oh yeah, it's right there. Okay, and these ones are Punctata, um, gray gum. I'm not 100% sure, so we'll see. Um, yeah, but again, you know, the, the pretty typical, like, oblong, reniformed, slightly bellowed um, cotyledons. All right, that's an acacia. Um, that's acacia saligna. All right, so here are some eucalyptus saligna, eucalyptus saligna, eucalyptus saligna. I germinated too many of them. Um, so yeah, if you live in some area where you can grow this tree out to its full potential, please leave a comment and I'm more than happy to send you some. Um, but yeah, I was worried the seeds were bad, so I sold too many of them. Now I have a lot of them. And there's a few more on the balcony too. And this is Grandis. Um, Grandis is a really, really close relative to Saligna. Um, those seeds are actually quite old. I bought those Grandis seeds like, oh man, um, probably 2014. So they're like eight years old and they still germinated quite well. Um, I'm really impressed actually. All right, and those are just even more so like now that's I think I counted There's like 30 of them in that small pot. It's crazy. All right here. Um, this is Cosmophylla um, Cosmophylla is also again a quite interesting species um, It's a it's a Maui. It's native to like the kangaroo island I think area uh, where at least South Australia it's really easy, it's a really good species for nectar um, as well as coastal exposed sites because it can withstand pretty pretty heavy wind um, and really good um, versatile soil conditions as well as like they do well in waterlogged soils as well so great species 
uh, lots of nectar. Um, and they don't get too big either. They're probably like, you know, a few meters tall or up to 10 maybe. I don't remember exactly. Um, yeah, those are his cotyledons. And the last two I have here are... Um, this seed, I think it's Leucoxylon. I don't know the subspecies yet. I was also trying to see Spetiolaris, and one of the diagnostic feature of that is also these, the, the juvenile leaves, if they have petioles, that will be, you know, um, Petiolaris. And if they don't, that will be Leucoxylon, I think. And that's its running form. And last but not least, here is Eucalyptus Sideroxylon. And yeah, you see the cotyledon as well. So, yeah, so that's some midden area. Those are some of the, you know, the group in the, um, in the box group. Um, and some of them in those like Eastern Mahogany group. And, you know, there is a, a red gum, sorry, a gray gum and some red gums. And of course, some of the more early divergent ones as well as monocleptus. So, trying to see how each of them are performing and just to have a bigger collection or like a sample size of different um, of uh, different phylogenetic groups. All right, um, here's my my phone screen is really complaining. I cannot see anything now, so I'm just gonna end the video and hopefully I can give you an update in, uh, in a month or we'll see how fast they grow. All right, um, see you next time. Thanks.